Would you please welcome Don Iveson. Well, thanks, Gord. Go hi, Don Oiwasan. Leho. Um, you know, Edmonton is becoming a global city, and uh, that's not a new phenomenon. Edmonton was a global city in 1968 when my father-in-law came here with $300 in his pocket to go, actually first he came to Calgary and then later he came to Edmonton. But he came here to study chemical engineering because it was, because he knew even then that Alberta was a great place to get an education and to build a future. And, um, you know, decades later, he has built several businesses. I don't know if you've ever been to the Shogun Noodle House in Edmonton here. He built those businesses and he raised three wonderful children, one of whom is my wife. And he's taught me a great deal about the challenges of the immigrant experience and about entrepreneurship. Um, and he is one of my mentors. Um, and the good news actually is that because much of the family is still in Hong Kong, I have a free place to stay in Kowloon, which is fantastic. So right in Mong Kok, right by the, right by the night market. And so uh, if elected mayor and there are trade missions to uh, the southern part of China, we can save money for the taxpayer because I can stay with my, with my um, uh, auntie and uncle there. So, but I think that uh, right now the same thing is drawing people here today that drew my father-in-law here uh, four decades ago. And it's unlimited opportunity to build a life, to build a business, to build something new. Great education, which he benefited from and that his children have benefited from. And great quality of life, which we all enjoy here, whether it's uh, the night market in Chinatown or strolling in the River Valley in Louise McKinney Park. We have exceptional quality of life here in Edmonton. I actually think that right now Edmonton is the most underestimated city in North America. Do you agree? Yes. yes, yeah. And I think we're tired of that. I think we're done apologizing for Edmonton. I think we have a phenomenal story to tell, and I think we're ready to start telling it. Now, we do have work to do, too. Obviously, we have to fix the roads and the pipes. And it's important not only to be good stewards of the assets that we've inherited, that the city builders who came before us have built for us $35 billion worth of infrastructure that we need to look after properly. And we are beginning to look after it better, but it takes many years to catch up after the kind of neglect that we saw in the 90s. But we will not make that mistake again. Edmontonians are wise to that. And so we are investing considerably more in your neighborhood roads, both in reconstruction when it's needed and in preventative maintenance to make sure things last their full life. But it's also important that we look after infrastructure properly so that we have pride in our city. Because when someone uh, comes in from out of town and sees the roads in the state that they were in this spring, it's hard to explain to them why we live in Edmonton, why we do business in Edmonton. When you're trying to recruit a new employee from out of town, it's tough to do that when the roads look like they did this spring. And when you're trying to impress a client and say, this is a great place to do business and we want to do business with you, it's hard to do that when our city looked like it did this spring. So for stewardship and for pride, we have to fix the infrastructure. That is, without a doubt, the first priority of any mayor and council. But there's much more to do beyond that. We have a region to fix, and we've made progress in the recent years with the Capital Region Board, but there is a great deal of unfinished business in the region. We still have an unlevel playing field with our neighbors, especially in the counties, and until that's remedied, we won't be able to compete, uh, at least not fairly. And I don't mind competition. I just want a level playing field. And I think I can help get us there because I have the relationships in the region, having chaired the Regional Transit Committee for the for the last several years. Uh, I'm on a first name basis with each one of the mayors and relevant provincial ministers and MLAs who we need to work with to solve the inequities that exist in our region and that are holding Edmonton back. And finally, I think we also need to focus on housing and transportation choice. We're building excellent suburbs right now with a great diversity of different kinds of housing for different families of different shapes and sizes. 
We need to see a considerable reinvestment in the core of our city and conditions that are conducive to redevelopment of our older neighborhoods and our big development opportunities like um, uh, Blatchford, our airport redevelopment site, which if we build it right, can be our Brooklyn. It can be the place where families find that urban transit-oriented lifestyle that they are sometimes leaving Edmonton because they can't find here. And tying it all together with LRT and with the bus infrastructure that works, just like in Hong Kong, uh, is critical to ensuring that Edmonton can compete for the talent that we need and the investment that we need to continue to be one of the most prosperous places in the world. So I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much.